I'm 10 years old, and the only responsibility I have is to be where my parents expect me to be, and that is outside. Now, outside could be riding all over town on my pink huffy bike, or it can be wading around the frog pond with my friend Sarah trying to catch tadpoles. Or outside can mean playing in the woods. My town is small, but my world is huge thanks to my vivid imagination and my best friend, Sarah Tabor. She is the Simon to my Garfunkel, the Frick to my Frack, my partner in crime. Together, we get into all kinds of mischief. Not because we want to, but between my curious nature and her resting state of constant motion, well, sometimes mistakes are made. Sarah lives down the street from me, and we do everything together. We are in the same class at school. We terrorize the Sunday school teachers together. Um, we trick-or-treat at Halloween, and we love to lip sync songs in her bathroom mirror, like Karma Chameleon or 99 Red Balloons or whatever's on the radio. Sarah and I are quite the opposites, too. I'm bookish and already perfecting my good girl persona. She can't stay out of trouble to save her life. Her home life is very ordered and structured, and her parents call each other Poopsie and Pooh Bear. It is not like this at my house. My house sits in a corner of a lot of land. The backyard is immense, and it's filled mostly with tall yellow grass, the kind that scratches at your legs and crunches under your feet. I walk through that field every day, heading straight for that flagpole that never flies a flag because just beyond that rusty old pole is the tree line where the woods and the path begins. It is a completely different world as soon as you step into those woods, and I love it in there. It's dense with trees, and the canopy is so thick the light is dim. You have to wait a moment to let your eyes adjust. And the air is like 10 degrees cooler, which is such a relief because my house isn't air conditioned and summers get hot and humid. The path I like to walk is well-worn and it has key landmarks that help me avoid the skunk cabbage and the poison ivy. First, you have the Fern Kingdom. It is a sea of lush green ferns that stand nearly hip high on both sides of the path. I like to walk and run my fingers along the top of the fronds. Then I climb down into the dry stream bed and up over the other side, though I sometimes have to jump it because of the snapping turtle. Then I walk a little further and I have to climb over a massive rotting oak tree and I'm nearly there. There is my fort. It's on the other side of the woods and it is awesome. It is this huge, um, just natural bowl shaped hole dug into the side of a dirt embankment by time and animals. It holds at least four kids and it's obscured by tall grass, which makes it the perfect hideout. My friends and I like to imagine we are rock stars and the fort is our apartment. Other times, Sarah bro Sarah's brother shows up with his friends and we imagine a world laid siege by aliens and the fort is our home base and the woods are filled with enemies. There is a little stream that runs alongside our fort and separates it from the train tracks. Now we've been forbidden to play on the tracks, but we still jump over that polluted water to get to the rail so we can explore and walk along the tracks. Now we have to be careful because there is a traffic bridge just down the way and we've been spotted from it and gotten into trouble. We would love to climb up that bridge and climb uh, and play in the dirt spaces underneath the road but it has been made very clear that we would be uh, never allowed in the woods again if we ever did that. So one particularly hot day, Sarah and I are playing on the tracks. As I go about gathering up the rocks, I hear that familiar ting of steel on steel, the first sign that a train is coming. I squint down at the horizon and I see a little black dot shimmering on the tracks. And a moment later, the red signal lights come on. Now, usually at this point, someone would shout, enemy, and we'd all make a mad dash for the fort. But not today. We hear the low rumble of the train coming, and we just stand there. I don't know who says it, 
but I clearly hear, let's go for it. And Sarah and I start running for the bridge. I can hear the train gathering speed behind us as I make a mad scramble for the steps. The steps are these huge cement blocks that flank each side of the bridge. They look like pillars to an ancient temple. It takes everything I've got to climb up at least one of them, and I think there's at least eight. I'm putting my whole heart into it to try to beat the train. Breathless, Sarah and I get to the top step and plant ourselves as close to the edge as possible. I glance down at the uh, ground far below me and immediately decide not to do that again. We link arms and brace ourselves against the rush of hot wind and the deafening roar of the train that is now upon us and just a few feet from where we're sitting. We frantically pump our arms in a trucker salute and I swear I see the flash of the engineer's smile as the train goes speeding by and a horn blares. The rush of the train, the force of it just pushes me back into Sarah. Our hair is whipping around our faces and we are screaming in terror and delight as the train goes by. And just like that, it's gone. In silence, we climb up the dirt path that leads to the sidewalk and walk home over the bridge as the cars go past us. My heart is still racing. I can't believe we just did that. We get to my house just in time to see, uh, to hear Sarah's mom calling her home for dinner. She jumps on her bike and I lean in with a whisper. That was wicked awesome. See you tomorrow.